pleasure and honor for me to be here. Uh, my uh, great joy years ago was uh, being the opening speaker for the first gathering of TASA. <clears throat> and I remember the excitement uh, and the anticipation of a very successful organization. And it certainly has happened, uh, bringing together uh, such accomplished people on both sides of the ocean uh, for uh, not just uh, exchanging ideas, uh, but getting to know each other at many different levels is, is uh, very important. Now, we'll be talking about innovation, we'll be talking about entrepreneurship. I'm a great believer of uh, a two-curve uh, phenomenon. There's the initial startup. It's always difficult to launch something is very hard. As uh, the Chinese seem to say, the first step is the beginning of every journey. And it takes a lot of effort to take that step. And when TASA had taken that step, I certainly was very excited. And I know all the birth pangs that went into that. Then there comes the euphoria. When things take off, you say, this is great. It's going to happen. And then you hit that inevitable peak. And then comes the valley of death. And you don't know what to do. All of a sudden, your friends pull away, funds disappear, uh, people don't show up, issues come up, uh, yeah, conflict emerges. You don't know what to do, and you think it's the end. But that's the real test of entrepreneurs. That's the real test of innovator scientists, that value of so-called death. Now, people say if you traverse the value of death, that's it, you've made it. But my experience is actually more, more dangers exist on the other side. Uh, so first, uh, initiation, step one. If you do that, great. Then there is euphoria, you better manage it well because there's going to be the downfall and you better deal with it, deal with the desert so you can get to the other side. When you get to the other side, don't think it's over because the natives will not like you. You've been successful. And now you have to face others who have been successful and you have to compete with them. And that's when it really happens. That's the stage of sustainability. Can you really stay in the game? Can you stay in the game? And I think Tasha has gone through all of these things. <laughs> there was the initial euphoria, there was the peak, and then there was a the difficult period uh, dissension, lack of funds, uh, and so on and so forth. And now I see that the, the, that, uh, you know, the value of death has been crossed. Now you have to deal with other organizations who are very successful, who want to compete with you, uh, and so on. But I'm very proud to be, um, uh, as I said, one of the initial uh, uh, members. Uh, I was an honorary member at that time uh, of TASA, and I know this is going to be very successful. Which brings me to the topic of the, uh, of the day. And I've looked at the agenda, very exciting agenda. Many dimensions are being covered. But I wanted to start from the why. Why do we do things? What is the purpose, end point? There are many ways of planning. You can plan from here to the future, or you can plan from the future to the present. Uh, and both are fine, but uh, sometimes I think it might be more productive to look at the end of a journey. Where do we want to be? Why do we want to be there? And then back into how do we get there? So uh, you know, we can come up with many objectives. We can come up with many uh, postulates. Uh, well, what's the purpose of TASA? What are we trying to do in collaboration? What's the purpose of science? What's the purpose of technology? What's the purpose of discovery? It goes on and on and on. Some people say, I just enjoy it. And that's fine. I just love to have fun in life. And my fun in life is in the laboratory. Nothing wrong with that. Other people say, I want to be accomplished. I want to do this. I want to do that. Nothing wrong with that. Other people say, I want to make an impact. When I die, I want people to say, gosh, he really made a difference. 
really made a difference. Or an organization might say, we want to make an impact. And I believe TASA is in that category. TASA, as I understand it, really does want to make an impact. Impact on what? Impact on whom? So that's some of the discussions uh, today. But I will start with economic growth as one possibility. At the end of the rainbow, we want to find a lot of economic growth, prosperity, fairness, and uh, in general, the escalation of the society to the next level. So how does one accomplish that in this world of technology everywhere, innovation everywhere? I think every country now is focused on innovation. Uh, I grew up in the shadow of the Cold War. <laughs> The world was divided into two ideologies, and the world was divided into two camps. Except for North Korea and Cuba, that's gone. It's all one model across the world. Everybody wants business institutions, companies, uh, economic freedom, political freedom to bring prosperity to their societies. So if we look at it that way, what are the uh, ways and what are the means? Now, innovation has become a hot topic, and rightly so. Innovation is very important. In the 90s, it wasn't the I word, innovation. It was the E word, entrepreneur. Everybody wanted to be an entrepreneur, entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship. Now it's innovation, innovation, innovation. Uh, but I want to add other things to it. There is um, imitation. And it's the, the Asians say imitation is the best form of flattery. And I believe there is nothing wrong with imitation. If one looks at US economic development in the 1800s, US did a lot of imitation. And some might even say uh, pilfering from the intellectual property of England. Uh, but imitation is very important. And I think Turkey did that in the 30s, in the 40s, in the 50s, a lot of our institutions were straight imitations. And then comes adaptation after imitation. And then once you master it, you begin to adapt. And I think in adaptation are the seeds of innovation. It's very difficult to invent and innovate in vacuum. You need a context. You need to look at something understand it, and then you can say, I can make this better. I can change this. And I think Turkey has gone through, I believe, the adaptation phase in the 60s and 70s and 80s, and I, I went through that phase. I saw that phase in Turkey. There were many companies formed as exclusive agents of this, exclusive agents of that, and they engaged in adaptation. And so I think there's an infrastructure in Turkey for imitation adaptation, and now I think there's an infrastructure for vigorous <coughs> innovation. But I would again ask the question, why? Is it innovation for innovation's sake, or is it a mission-driven uh, 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 initiative? And in the US, despite all the talk about pure research, and I have been in those circles, I was in the guts of Bell Labs, I, many of them were good colleagues of mine. Even there, there was a sense of mission driven. What's the mission? And where does the mission come from? And I'll briefly talk about that. That's the agenda making. Agenda making. Who makes the agenda? Where does the agenda come from? And how can one refine and advance the, advance the agenda? So, uh, you know, looking at these, these different uh, phases, uh, uh, let me summarize again. Initially, that's imitation, adaptation, innovation. But there is another phase, actually two more. Okay, you've innovated. Great. How do you implement it? And that's where the death, uh, value of death comes. You have this great idea. You have this great invention. You're excited. You're going to transform the world. You present it, and people say, really? How much will it cost us? You say, look, I'm going to transform the world. Well, what's the benefit to Procter & Gamble? I'm talking about the world. Really. 
So, well, maybe we'll